Okay, uh, I'm going to show you how to use Solver to create your exponential smoothing model. So we have here the Rocky Top Truck demand data. So over in this column, I'm going to create the forecast. I'll call that three and a half foot feet. And uh, so to initialize the forecast, the forecast that I make in the first week just does the demand for that week. And then in future weeks, I'm going to have to put in the forecast function. So I'm going to put in alpha. And just for starters, I'll assume to say alpha is 0.1. So in week two, to get a forecast, I'm going to take my alpha to 0.1 times the most recently observed value plus 1 minus alpha times the old forecast. has updated my forecast, and I want to make the references to alpha, which is in cell C7, I want to make those absolute references, and that will let me copy this formula down to the bottom. So now I'll fill in the formula, and I don't want to see all those decimals, so let's reformat this. And I'll make it to two decimal places. <clears throat> okay. And then the uh, next column, I will, uh, this is supposed to be z hat sub t, so let me make that a small font so it will look like it's going to fit. So, okay, there we go. <clears throat> the, the next column, I want to put my error that I make each week. So I don't make a forecast for week one, so I don't have an error for week one. But for week two, my error, now watch this, we have to be real careful here. I want to take the actual that I observed this week, and I want to subtract from that the forecast that I made last week. So there's my error. Last week, I forecast 94, the actual demand was 104, so the error was 10. And I want to copy that error down all the way to the bottom to the entire 30 weeks, and uh, I wouldn't have actually had to compute the error. I could have computed the error squared and been done with it, uh, but uh, it's a good practice to compute the error because that's what we also refer to as a residual, and that's something that I would want to chart over time and, and look at, and I'm not going to take time to do all of the charts and histograms that you would normally do when you're doing this kind of forecasting, but we would chart the forecast versus the demand. We would ch uh, chart the error over time, and we would do a histogram of the error. So the next column is going to be the error squared, and that's just simply taking what I got there and squaring it, and copying that all the way down to the bottom. So. Uh, I got a couple more things to do, and then we'll be ready to uh, use Solver to figure out what the optimal value of alpha or the smoothing parameter is. I want to compute the average error. I'll put that up here somewhere. Uh, average error squared. I misspoke when I said I want to compute the average error. The average error should be somewhere around zero. So I take the average of all of these, and that is the average error squared or the root mean squared error. And then I take the square root of that, and I call that the standard error. down here below so 
we can remember how I got that. And uh, so then, the standard error is equal to the root of the standard error squared. And so I got a standard error of about 8.72. Now that's associated with using this particular value of L. And what I need to do is to find the optimal value of alpha, or the one that gives me the smallest average error squared, or the smallest standard error, either one, both the same. So here's how I get to the solver routine. It, <coughs> I will go to the data, and over here on the right, there will be a question mark, and routine called solver and I assure you installed that last semester when you were taking uh, prescriptive analytics but if not you can install that from, from uh, at Microsoft. <coughs> so first of all I have to set an objective that I want to minimize or maximize and that is the average error squared and I need to tell solver, I don't want to maximize this, I want to minimize it. In other words, I want to make the average error squared as small as possible. And then it next asks me, well, what cells do you want to change as inputs to minimize that? And I want to change the value of L. So that is my input. And something else that you can do, I usually uh, do it when I'm optimizing, is I allow solver to make the variable be uh, negative if I want to. It's, it, by default, it assumes that I want a positive value for what I'm uh, getting here. If I make it, uh, allow it to go negative, uh, that sometimes makes the search work a little better. It, sometimes it gets hung up when I put a constraint in there. <coughs> and also, if you got something weird going on in your data and you end up with a negative <coughs> alpha as the optimal value, that tells you uh, something that you didn't know. So anyway, uh, I've, I've got it set up, and the solving method I would use is the default one, GRG nonlinear. That stands for Generalized Reduced Gradient Nonlinear. So now we're ready to allow it to change alpha in order to make the average error as small as possible. So I hit solve and I've got alpha and it says the optimal value of alpha is about 0.21 and the standard error that I get associated with that is a value of about 8.52. So we went through this fast and there are a lot of other things you would do in analyzing your data but you already know how to do those. And those are the things where you would chart the data versus the uh, forecast, where you would chart the residuals, and you would <coughs> make histograms of the residuals or the error and uh, inspect those to see if you see anything interesting in your data that might help you model it better.